Hi guys, I'm hoping everybody can see me okay. I'm wanting to start our webinar. Hi Sharon and Asher, I don't know if you've come back on board. I can see you've got a message there for me. Can I just ask that someone shouts out and says, yes, I can hear you, Barbara. Crystal saying hi, great. So people can hear me okay? You can hear me? It's a, it's a bit nerve wracking. It's a bit fingernail biting. Just want to make sure that people can hear me. So Caroline, yes, you can hear me okay? Loud and clear. Awesome. Fantastic. It's always good to check that technology is working. Thanks, guys, for joining me today. We're going to be roughly about an hour. So it is recorded. If you have to leave, I understand. This is about time management. So if you need to go and do something, I do understand. But it is recorded. I'd love to hear where everybody's from. So if you want to, just put a little message where you're from. I imagine there'll be a couple of people from Alice Springs because I'm in Alice Springs, a couple of people from Brisbane. Uh, but if the let me know where you're from. Let me know where some other people are from. New South Wales, cool, awesome. Carolyn, yes, Heritage Park. Uh, and Naomi's from Brizzy. Hi, Naomi. Great to go have you guys on board. It's just nice if a couple of people let me know where they're from. It's really lovely to have you here with me today. I'm a bit nervous. I'm going to be honest and transparent with you. I'm so used to speaking in front of people on a stage, but doing a webinar is so different. It's like trying to drive a car. You've got to look at so many different things. Thank you, Annette. That's so kind. She said, don't be nervous. You sound great. You're awesome. Thank you. Thanks for your uh, its support and encouragement. Okay, let's get going. Let's see if I can do this okay. So what I want to share with you, how I want to kick off is to let you know that we're going to be covering seven secrets, that's for sure. I'm going to cover those with you, but there's probably three main areas that we need to focus on that we can break it down into. So the key things are awareness, communication, and systems. These are the things that we need to look at when we're looking at our time management. So I'm going to break it down into those areas. So, oops, sorry, you just saw my desktop there. As I said, I'm learning how to drive. <laughs> so, yeah, we've got seven, seven secrets that we're going to cover. You can see those colours there. They're going to break it down into that awareness, that communication style, and then the systems that we need to apply in our strategies, in our communication strategies. So I want to give you a bit of a background into who I am and why is it that I can be talking to you today about time management. So I actually started my career over 20 years ago in the film and television industry. And what I discovered much later in life is that I am passionate about creating order out of chaos. I love to make sense of things. And even while I was working in the film industry, I was also waitressing and I became very good at waitressing and was asked to manage some of those function centers and restaurants. And at the time I said, no, no, I'm pursuing a career in the film and television industry. But it was later on that I decided to actually branch out. So even though I worked in hospitality, marketing, film and television, aged care, not-for-profit, uh, I, I now work with entrepreneurs and small business around time management. And it's that passion that I have that was consistent through all those things. So I'm sharing with you knowledge that I have brought from all those different industries. And I love sharing and I love learning. So if you if you want to share anything, if I say anything, any little words of wisdom that you like, you can use what's called a hashtag in your social media. So you just use that hash symbol and then write the word time tamer after it and I'll find you. You can do it on Facebook, you can do it on Twitter. They're the spaces that I like to work in. So if you've got uh, if you've got any questions, by all means, put them into the, the screen and I can see them there. And otherwise, any words of wisdom, share them on social media. Let people know what it is that you've learnt today. So number one, let's get started. What's the first secret? So the first secret is mindfulness. Mindfulness is about that awareness. What we need to do is to be able to actually take a step back and look at 
what it is that we need to change, what it is that we need to do to be more effective, to be more productive, to be more efficient with our time management. So what does that actually mean? Now, this some of this comes from some of the learning that I've done in Buddhism and the philosophies of Buddhism. So I'm going to share some of that with you. Okay, so this is a guy being very, very mindful. So we need to focus on ourselves and our team and our space. So when we're looking at ourselves, we need to ask a question about when am I personally unproductive? Now, what are some of the signs that we can see for ourselves to know that we're being unproductive? When do you feel unproductive? When do you know that you're unproductive? If you've got a pen and paper, just for a moment, write some things down. What are some things that you identify about yourself to know that you're unproductive? What are some of the flags? So it can be things like uh, you forget things. You can't find your emails. Maybe there's some conflict happening. That's sometimes a sign that you're being unproductive. So these are the kind of things that we want to look for. Sorry, guys, my desktop keeps flashing up because I'm doing stuff on another screen. Um, so the other thing that we need to think about, let's see if this works. Oh, no, I'll go back here. Is when are you productive? What are the signs for when? What do you want to aspire to? Do you know what to look for? How do you know when things are working? So again, what are they, write down one of the things that you want to do for yourself to be more productive. What are the problems that you want to resolve for yourself so that you are productive? And have some, some thought around that. Now, if you don't know what it is that makes you unproductive or productive, by all means, have a chat to me after this webinar and I can explain to you some ideas around that. But take a moment just to brainstorm that and think about that. And then, of course, you need to think about your team. When is your team unproductive? What are the signs to look for within your team? Are there bottlenecks? Are there black holes? Is there things that are slowing down with the team that you're working with, whether you've got your own business or whether you're a manager or even if you're just working with groups of people outside of work? How do you know when they're being unproductive? And then, of course, when are your team productive? So what are the things that you want to aspire to? When are they working at their best? Are they motivated? Are they enjoying what they're doing? And so when we talk about space, it's not just about your physical space. It's also the digital space. And is there too much clutter for you to be able to be organised in that space? because the clutter really takes away your focus and attention. We're going to talk a bit more about that later on in the webinar. But if you've got, if you can't find things easily, then that's a telltale sign that you've got too much clutter. Think about it in your digital space in terms of your emails. Do you find it really hard to find emails? Do you miss emails? Are you searching through things all the time? Can your team find things really clearly in your, your cloud system or your filing system online? Are there duplications of things? Now, this can apply in a paper sense as well, like if you've got duplication of papers and files and clutter on your desk. But just think about the clutter. So, okay, can you easily find everything you need in a timely manner or do you get distracted as you look for things and search for things? Do you lose things on your desk? Do you lose things on your computer? Do you lose things in your filing cabinet? Can you put your fingers on it really quickly? So these are the things that you need to consider in terms of being objective and taking a step back and being mindful around what's happening in your space. All right, so let's move on to the next one. We've covered mindfulness. The next thing in terms of awareness is procrastination. It's to look at what's actually happening when we procrastinate. And this is a part of being aware as well. Now, I want to ask you this question, guys. What is What does procrastination mean for you? I'm just going to pop my webinar screen back up, but I would love a little bit of feedback. I'd love for you guys to put in your... Uh, in the comments there, what you think procrastination is. And while you do that, I'm just going to take a sip of water because I know with webinars you have to be hydrated. 
Does anyone want to share with me what procrastination is, what they think it might be? So Crystal said it's avoiding my work and it said delay, delay, delay. I'm surprised no one said I'll get back to you because <laughs> quite often someone does that. Naomi said not doing the important things you know you need needs to be done but lacking the willingness to do it. <clears throat> Sharon said what I've been doing this morning hey you made it here that's great finding an excuse to do something else mm, that's a great one Caroline that Caroline mentioned that one they, that's great guys that's that's that really sums it up doesn't it and when we don't deal with procrastination what happens is we create stress for ourselves and I deal with people in terms of stress management as well because it gets to the point where we have to do something and it's become urgent so it's about that prioritization as well which we're going to talk about as well so here's what I think procrastination is I think that procrastination is about choosing to do things that give us more pleasure over the things that don't so we're doing things that we enjoy and give us great satisfaction over the things that we that we don't so we put off the things we don't enjoy and then choose to do something that gives us much greater pleasure so i hope that makes sense for you that that's my definition of procrastination and it's really important to understand where that comes from so I want you to think about any jobs that you have in your work or your business that you absolutely hate. And then think about what are the things that you whip through and go, yep, can't wait to get that done because you love it. There, there's some telltale signs for you. And the reason I've got this picture up here of, of a compass is because it comes down to our core beliefs. Your core beliefs are the foundation of what you value in your life and your day-to-day -day living. It's the compass that drives you in a particular direction. It's what really makes up your true character. It comes down to your values, I guess. And it's really a foundation for where you're going to spend your time. What you value most, what you enjoy, what gives you pleasure, what you place importance on, that's where you're going to spend your time. And it all, they all tie in together. It's just whatever label you want to put on it. What you think are your core beliefs may be wishful thinking, but you might, you might actually be surprised when you discover what your core beliefs are. And it, it's, it's something that has sit with us for a long time. It, it, sometimes it stems from our childhood in terms of what we're passionate and what we value and what's important to us but then we get distracted by what we think we should be doing what other people tell us we should be doing and oh, I must be doing that and I should be doing that but there's a part of you that's driven in another direction that wants to do something else so when you can really uncover this and unmask it and look deep down you, and discover what your core beliefs are, it helps you to identify where you're going to be dragged away from what you're doing. You can identify what your strengths are and what your weaknesses are when you understand this and where you might need support. And of course, this is where your core beliefs are where your strengths lie. This is what the things that you're, you are naturally gifted at and where you're powerful and perhaps it might be what you get where your weaknesses are as well what you'll always be drawn to do so the key is that we what we are really good at in our work in our life in our business we put great value on it's really important to us because we're really good at it it's really important to us and you know what if we're not good at it we'll get good at it very quickly because we value it we're going to put a lot of energy into learning everything we can about whatever it is that we place great value on. We're going to get distracted by it, read it on Facebook, listen to it on the radio, watch it on TV, follow it, absorb it, consume it, taste it, breathe it because we love it so much. That's where we're going to get distracted. So it's about understanding what your innate values are. And that's why we create this roller coaster. This is why it's up, down, getting dragged around all the time because you're getting pulled away to the things that give you great value. And typically we don't value things or, or the things that we 
we don't value are not clear to us and they are difficult oh, they bog us down and so we put them off and that's why this roller coaster is created so the key here is to is to track a course that's why i've got this ship here is to stay on course the the secret here the trick is to tie into the task you don't want to do tie into that something that you value and that gives you great pleasure now i can't go into lots of detail right now about how to do that but that at least gives you something to think about in terms of how you can manage your procrastination and if i had more time i could do a whole talk just on this in fact i do do talks just on this subject but that's the key in terms of what you need to do okay i'm using my little you can probably see my mouse on here flicking through the sides slides it's just easier for me so now we're going to move into that communication and has i don't know if you guys have ever done personality testing if you've done personality profiling testing has anybody done anything i'll just put pop up on my webinar chat again have people done um, some personality profile tests have you done things like myers-briggs or disc or things like that yeah, and it's done Myers-Briggs. So you'll be familiar with this. Ah, Sharon just did one last Wednesday. Naomi's done DISC. So you guys will be familiar with this. You understand, you'll know this stuff straight away. You'll know what things that you're good at and you'll know how to communicate with others. Now, this is a really fundamental thing in terms of time management. We've got, there are, these are all the different people out there, Myers-Briggs, DISC, there's a whole range. So I'm going to talk to you about communication. And there's some guys that did these, that slide that just went up then, um, Dr. David Merrill and another author wrote a book back in the 60s about communication styles. And basically, it, most of them drill it down into four different traits. Now, no one likes to be pigeonholed and I don't like to pigeonhole people, but we can kind of break it down into some similarities. And why this relates to time management is because when you can identify your own personality style and become really, really clear about that, you know what your strengths and weaknesses are. You know what your distractions will be. You know what you're good at and you're fast at and what things you'll struggle with and where you'll get distracted as well. But when you can identify that about yourself, it makes it really easier for you to be able to identify different traits in other people and work with them. So you work more efficiently, you become more productive and you become a more powerful communicator. And so what I do with people is adapt that into a time management style and look at how all of this personality stuff actually applies to your time management. So I'm going to give you some ideas on how that works. We're going to look on the left and the right hand side of the screens now. So people, you might want to draw some quadrants on your page, break it into four if you want to. If you've got a pen and paper, draw some squares, draw a quadrant. People that fit into this left-hand side here, these are what we call the ask style. So what that means is that people that sit in to, on this side of the quadrant will ask questions more often than make statements. They will speak slowly. They won't interrupt. They'll pause before answering, answering questions immediately. They seldom use their voice to emphasize and they tend to lean backwards. So they imagine somebody sitting there, nodding their head with their fingers on their chin, listening to you going, mm hmm yeah, yep. And asking questions and being very thoughtful and slow and methodical. And then we've got the people on the other side. Now, I bet you can guess I'm on this side. So I speak fast. I've got to try and manage my pace of speaking. Of course, I'm a little bit nervous, so I'm probably speaking faster than I should. People on this side make statements that, uh, that they, they make statements rather than ask questions. They often interrupt. I have to work really hard not to interrupt people. I need to focus on listening more. Um, they tend to answer people's questions very quickly. They use their voice for emphasis and they lean in. They lean forward, full of enthusiasm. So you've got people that sit on that side. Then you've got, oh, so how that fits together is that the people that are on, the, on this side over here, on the left-hand side of the ask people, they're more slower and indirect, whereas the tell people are more faster and direct, yeah? So they sit on that side. 
Okay, so now we're going to look top and bottom. So up the top, this this relates to uh, how people re respond when they're communicating. So people that sit up the top have varied facial expression. So this would be me if you could see my face now. Um, I'm actually talking with my hands, even though you can't see me. Uh, they have frequent eye contact while listening, lots of body movement, broad range of feeling, personal feeling in their communication, a very feeling orientated language and an expansive vocal variety. And then we've got these guys down the bottom who are very controlled. Everything is controlled about their communication and their response. So they'll have limited facial expression. They'll have infrequent eye contact while listening, very minimal controlled body movement, a narrow range of feelings, personal feelings in their communication, very fact oriented language, limited vocal variety and very, very specific controlled language. So when we put, when we look at those guys up, to down you can see the, the emotive ones up the top here are, are relationship orientated and very open the ones down here the control ones are very self-contained and task orientated so why i'm showing you this from a time management point of view is if you look at these personality traits if you if i'm up here if i'm this personality trait i'm going to do the stuff that that's like that i'm going to love doing that stuff and do that first before I have to do any of this stuff down here. This is what I'm going to put off. This is the stuff that goes against my flow. This is the stuff that I'm going to get distracted, procrastinate about. So this is why this sort of stuff is really important in terms of looking at your time management. So, okay, moving on from there, we're going to the next one, flipping through to our next little secret. So the next one is about email mastery the reason i've put this into communication is because this stems down to how we want to the timeliness of how we communicate with people what i mean is who is the most important person to speak to and when should you be following these people up how do you prioritize the response? How do you control when you follow up? Who's the first person you want to be responding to? And the timeliness of that response. So this is why I put this under the communication area of our secrets here. The thing, what I wanted to share with you is an idea of an open loop. Now, if, have you ever heard a microphone squealing with that feedback squealing noise? That's actually the sound, if I can get this right, that's the sound of the microphone recording the speaker, which is giving you a monitoring sound of what's coming through the microphone. So it's creating this loop. Now, this picture here that I've got here is actually video feedback. It's a video which is filming the monitor, which is showing you what the video is filming. It's kind of like when you put mirrors up against each other. Now, the reason I've shown you this image is to demonstrate to you the philosophy of an open loop. It's where we keep revisiting things. We keep touching things. We keep going over things over and over and over and over. And that's what can consume our time and switches our brain around from one place to another and distracts us. So we want to reduce the touch points that we create. Think about how many times you scroll through your inbox to find an email or scroll through your inbox to, to go, which one should I respond to first? I've got so much to do. Which one's the most important one? So this is the concept. This is what we want to try and try and reduce. We want to reduce those open loops. So what happens is with our email, a lot of people still an, apply an old school thinking of emails that is that one file one email has one name and one location yeah and if that if that email or that file or that document needs two locations we typically create two copies of it so think about an old-fashioned office we take a photocopy and put the copy in the different section of the filing cabinet and stamp it with copy and then if it gets updated, we have to do, it, do that process again. But now we work in digital spaces. So we need to think about things in a non-linear way. 
they're not as they they can we can come at them from different angles so a lot of people will have uh, email systems that look like this lots and lots and lots of folders it's not uncommon a lot of people do it so again i just want to get a feel for you from you guys who has put a little message there who has uh, folders that look a little bit like that in their email system <laughs> caroline that's me crystal me dale walker just like that naomi oh my god mine is out of control louise yes <laughs> yeah it's not uncommon to have that so uh Annette said, I used to be like that, but not so bad now. Uh, big pat on the back for you, Annette. I'm applauding you. Well done. And um, look, it's not it's not uncommon and I have to, to, to watch myself to not fall into that happen. I went from going from just a couple of folders, but I have expanded out a bit now. So it's trying to find the balance. But I want you to, I really want to test your thinking here. I want you to think outside of the box. What if we could change the way that we think about our digital space and our folders? So, for example, we we often file things based on how it, what it relates to, okay? We think it has one title, one name. So it could be the who. It could be a client. It could be a boss. It could be family. It could be church. These are the ways that we, we look at who it relates to we might want to give it that label yeah but then what about time we might want to file things based on their time is it urgent do we need to address it when possible when i can or maybe i'm waiting on a response from somebody we might have a, a um some folders or files or pieces of paper of oh, i'm waiting to hear back on that person maybe we've sent them a quote or maybe we might want to file things based on the, the title, project one, project two, project three. So they might come under different projects. So what I want to suggest to you is what if you had one email, one email, you're not making duplicates of it, that you could look at in terms of you could put give it all of those, those titles, all of those categories, yeah? So that one email could be looked at from different points of view from different angles and with the digital space now it makes it a lot easier to do that and I want to challenge the way that you think about your emails in terms of how you file them and categorize them so what I do and what I try to teach people is this methodology see here I've got three folders just three folders that I work from but within those emails I use categories to be able to differentiate those emails. So I might have an email, one email that belongs to prospect, but also belongs to urgent. So that one email will appear in both of those sections, but it's got two categories applied to it. So I hope that makes sense for you. So I'm actually sorting my emails by categories. And this is a system that I apply to be able to really quickly streamline my emails and prioritize them and focus on how I pay my attention. There's a whole range of other things that you can do within your email systems to automate uh, what happens and how things come in so you don't have to process them. But typically applying this methodology scary at first but applying this methodology and sticking with it can save you up to about two out two to three hours a day that's about 10 hours a week it's about 12 weeks a year just by changing that system the other thing that i do is using the flagging feature so then i'm able to using that flagging feature i'm able to decide what is it i'm dealing with today what is it that i'm dealing with tomorrow and you can see here i've got the categories as well to be able to have a bit of a focus on where I'm going with those things. So I'm, I'm moving through this fast, but I just wanted to give you some ideas of how you can apply these things in terms of your time management. Okay, the next thing is about systems. So now we're talking about how we need to actually organize ourselves. What systems are we putting in place to be more organized? So remember I was talking to you about that open loop before. What we want to do is try and reduce the touch points. We want to try and stop how many times we, things, we need to think about things, touch things or find things. We want to focus on the goal, if you can get your head around this, is a time and a place 
for everything. So what I mean by that is we want to put things away, take them out of our, our being in our face all the time because that's distracting and we keep touching them, looking at them, thinking about them, but have a system in place where they'll pop up for us or they'll come up to us in a timely manner. And the goal is to do that for everything that comes into our life and into our space. I like to think that I've come up with some strategies around that. So again, I don't, haven't got time to go into the complexities of that, but this is the overarching principle of how you would do that. So you look at what are the ways that you collect things? How do things come into your space? Do you have an in-tray on your desk? Do you have uh, emails that come in from your website? Do you have how do you manage your emails? Do you have phone calls that come in? How do you get things from your family? How do you get things from your community groups? You've got to manage all this stuff that's coming into your life. It's not just about work. It's your personal life, your social life, your sporting life, your church life, all of those things as well. How do you process that information? What method do you have to process it? Then the key is organizing that. What systems do you put in place to be able to organize that into an effective place and an effective time to deal with that? And then once you've got that in place, the you the reviewing is about the system you put in place to address things in a timely manner. And then of course you just it becomes automated and you just do it. But you need to break it down into these five key areas. How does, this is your funnel. This is how things flow and looking at where the bottlenecks are, where there might be flaws in that system. But that's that's the fundamental process that you need to think about in managing your time. All right, the next one, the next, we're making great time here, guys. The next thing, the next little secret I've got for you is about equipping yourself with tools. I love this. I'm going to run through some tools with you that can help you get far more organized. Now, the first one I want to share with you is it's not new. It's um, It's been around forever, but all time management experts refer to this tool. And it, when I, it was shown to me, it made a huge difference to how I prioritize things. And this is the foundation of everything I do. This applies in everything that I do. So it is called, sorry guys, just get my fingers, I'm try, like I said, it's like trying to drive a car. This is called, it's it's known as the Eisenhower quadrant. quadrant. It's known as the um, prioritization, prioritization quadrant is an impact. It's very, very common. Have people seen this before? Again, I'm just going to pop back into the conversation window. Have people seen this before? No, Dale hasn't yet. Naomi's seen it. Annette, no. Louise, yes. Caroline, no. Okay. I can see you guys have got a couple of questions there about emails as well. Sorry, I'm flipping between screens to be able to manage things. Sharon's just said, I've lots of email addresses instead, but just as confusing. Yeah, you can use categories to manage your email addresses as well within Outlook. And Annette said, so you can put multiple categories on one my email. I didn't know that. Oh, yes, Annette, it is cool. You can put lots and lots and lots of categories on there. And it's not just for emails. You can use it for your calendar and your contacts. So cool. I use Outlook as my database system. Anyway, I digress. Sorry, I just wanted to answer those questions that I could see in the little message message thing there. Let's come back to this prioritization tool. So this is how it works. You can see I love my quadrants. So as things go down, they become less important. As things move across, they become less urgent. And you might go, well, what's the difference between important and urgent? So let me explain to you the sort of things that will fit into this quadrant. Things that are urgent and important. These are things that are crisis. These are things you have to do today. These are, oh my God, if I don't do this now, it's going to be problematic. These are things I must attend to you straight away. So for example, um, 
in responding to, to, to leads that come in. Uh, there's a crisis, something's gone wrong and you have to fix it up. Um, an urgent order that might have come in from your business, um, a, a deadline that's right on your doorstep and you have to do this or it's going to fall over. That's what sits in that quadrant. What sits over here are things that are not necessarily urgent yet, but they're incredibly important. And if you don't address them or can set the, set a time for when you're going to address them or, or chip away at them, they're going to end up being pushed over into this quadrant. So things that might sit in here are building relationships with, with your family or your clients. So if you neglect that, don't put attention into that. Oh, it's going to be a problem. Um, things like doing research, uh, putting proposals together for clients. Uh, so doing things in a timely manner. And the time frame around these things would be probably this week or next week. But by golly, if you don't do it by next week, it's going to be a problem. You want to make sure by next week that you've attended to it. Things that sit down here that are urgent but not important now this is a this is an interesting one this is things like if the phone rings you have to answer it don't you you don't know who's at the other end of that phone call so that's urgent but but you know it might not be important or maybe it's attending to meetings you have to do those in the timely manner they you bound by time to go to your meetings or appointments but sometimes they're not important or maybe it's paying a bill a bill while I say it's not important I want you to think about these the things that are in this space are things that you could potentially delegate to somebody else so yes they need to be done now but not necessarily by you so can somebody else attend that meeting? Can somebody else answer that phone? Can somebody else pay that bill? They're things that need to be done now but aren't important in the scheme of things for you. So these things here are really important. You want to think about what you can delegate to other people. Things that are not urgent and not important, these are things that you're going to put off and keep putting off and that's okay. These are things like oh, big ideas for things that you want to do. Um, oh, it can be distractions as well. These are things that you can certainly drop off your list. So maybe it's a networking event. So, you know, it's kind of valuable, kind of helpful, but, you know, if you've got lots of other things happening, that's the sort of thing you're going to drop off. Uh, social media spending lots of time on social media you can cut back on that if you've got far more important things to do so these are the sort of things that sit in this quadrant so you can draw this up for yourself you've got a pen and paper quickly write this down um and what Na what's naomi said finance approval date is five days away urgent and important <laughs> Yes, so this, this is really, you can put this, if you're a very visual person, you can put this up on the wall and use post-it notes and flick it around. If you're working with a team of people where you've got lots of things that you're working on with your team, you can put this in a space where everybody can see it. I actually also apply this in terms of my email management. So I apply this into systems when I'm managing my emails and help me prioritise my emails and some of it's automated. So, for example, when leads come in from my clients are automatically flagged as important and urgent, whereas things like uh, my newsletters that come in, blogs and things like that from industry, I want to get to them when I can. So they very much sit in this space and I don't look at them, see them. They're not in my inbox. They sit, they go directly to a folder for me to look at when I'm ready. So that's how I, that gives you an example of how I apply that methodology. This is a tool. This is a time management tool. This is one of the things that you guys can use to help you manage your time. All right, let's go. What have we got? The next one we've got. Okay, this is a tickler file. Has anyone heard of a tickler file before? Does anyone know what this is? Have you heard of it before? Oops, you can see my heap dead stuff again. Stop flicking around screen. <laughs> okay, I'm trying to go back to the discussion window. There we go. Naomi, no, Caroline, no. Awesome. I'm going to teach you guys something today. So a tickler file is, is a way of being able to, this is, you can see here, this is applying it in a paper methodology. So if you're very much a paper person, Caroline, you'd probably find this really useful because I know you've got lots of documents and papers and things that you deal with. If you deal with paper, 
This is a really handy tool. I actually use this in a digital space. So how it works is as things come into your space, you decide which month of the year that you want to attend to them. So you can see here we've got September, October, November, da 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 da, da. goes along there. So, for example, if I've got a conference that I want to go to in November, I might put the registration papers in September. I'm not sure yet if I want to go, if I'm going to have time. So I want to make sure that come September, if I haven't thought about it, that I think about it then. And then with the current month, what you do is that you plot out, you can see the drop folders here, each day that you're going to attend to things. So on an this is really useful if you're working with a team of people and you know, for example, that these days you're going to be away. So if someone's going to fill in for you or cover for you, they can go to those days and see what, what jobs or work you had scheduled or it could be with your family if you're going into hospital, for example, and certain things need to be done on certain days. Now, you don't necessarily have to do all of the days. You can just do it by months. But the idea is as you work through these days, you then look at, okay, what's happening in the next month and then plot it out again. So you open up September and go, okay, for the month of September, what am I doing on the 13th, 14th, 15th, 16th, etc. So um, you can also, if you, if you want to use a simple method, you could use it in your emails if you wanted to with, not that I encourage it, but you could use folders that say today, this week, next week. So using that quadrant that I talked that that I showed you before, uh, I use it with Evernote. And I'm going to show you in a little bit how I do that and how I manage that. But I know people use this. Accountants use this in terms of paying bills. Um, traditionally, they would use it in terms of what what when holding in terms of cash flow. Going okay, I don't need to pay this bill yet, but I'm going to need to pay it in September. I need to be aware of it at that point in time. So that that's how that applies. Okay, moving along. Next tool is, the, I'm showing you all the paper ones first, is how you use a notebook. These are things that I learned when I was working with a producer before we had lots of digital tools. And he used to have a Spirex notebook for every client that he worked with. And what he would do is, as he was talking to those clients, he would take notes on a page. Once, once that page was no longer relevant, and once he had dealt with whatever the information was, he would fold it over like this, see, fold it in halves to, to the spine and alternate between folding down or folding up. And what that meant was that he could flick through the pages to get to the pages that still had current and active things he needed to address on those pieces of paper. I still apply this. I still use a notebook and still apply this. There are times I can't use digital things. So uh, I find this really, really useful. And you haven't lost information. You've just folded it over. Before I used digital technology to manage my to-do lists, I would what I would do is fold a piece of paper in half. So if you're still a pa paper person, this might be useful for you. Fold it in half so I had two columns. And I'd actually have one on this side as well, which you can't see in this photo. And this side would be work. This side would be home. And these are the phone calls I need to make. These are the emails I needed to respond to. And over this side would be things that I needed to do. So you can see here, these are the, the phone, these are examples I've got here of phone calls I need to make for, for work, phone calls I need to make for home. So that when you're sitting in front of the phone, uh, you know what phone calls you need to make. If your computer goes down, what phone calls do I need to make? When you're sitting in front of the computer and you need to do emails, you've got a pocket of time, what are those emails I need to attend to? So this is a really simple way of managing stuff in notebooks. Make sure you write those numbers down though, otherwise it makes the process really, really difficult. There's lots of different methodologies around managing notebooks and I go, I, I teach people those as well, but I just wanted to flag this one with you as an idea, as a tool. Evernote, oh my God, I love Evernote. This is a digital tool and this was created by these guys who never wanted to forget anything and never wanted to lose anything. So I use Evernote all the time. I couldn't live without it. I am a certified consultant now and have learned how to be able to share it with other people. Now I was going to show you a screenshot. You can see here, but you know what? I just decided that I'm going to quickly show you my Evernote. I've actually got it open and live, so I'm just going to show you how it works. This is my Evernote. 
So you guys can see that. Cool. I can see that you can see that. Has any? I can see the, the conversation thing here. Does anyone use Evernote at the moment or OneNote? Does anyone know about this tool, Naomi? No. Carolyn, no. Cool. I'm showing you guys something, Annette. I love OneNote. Annette, this is, Evernote's really similar. They're really, really similar. It's like Evernote's actually its competitor. So I'm going to show you a philosophy. Um, I imagine it's, it's, from what I know about OneNote, it's very, very similar. So how it works, guys, is like that notebook I showed you. But again, this is a, remember, this is a digital space. So you create notebooks and within those notebooks, you have lots of notes and you can move those notes around from notebook to notebook. Now, with Evernote, you can grab everything that you would normally use in a physical sense. So I can handwrite notes and take pictures and they go into Evernote. I can take photos of things. I can, Evernote has this tool called Web Clipper where it grabs information off websites. I don't have to bookmark anything or save things or cut and paste. It just grabs the information and drops it straight into to Evernote for me. It's got a very powerful search feature so I can find things really quickly. It can, I can drag and drop Word documents, PDFs into there. Um, so if I get sent airline tickets in a digital space, I put them into Evernote. It synchronizes with my phone. So if I'm in the airport, I can pull it up on my phone straight away. Or if I'm out and about and I capture something on my phone, when I get back to my computer, it's there. And it's also cloud-based as well. Here you go. Here's my tickler file that I was telling you about. See here, they're on my notebooks with things that I'm going to address. Look at March, whew, 50. But obviously I'll go through, I've plotted some things out. So if I'm going on a holiday, I might put my tickets, say I'm going on a holiday in June, I'll put my tickets in there. The other thing that you can do, which is really powerful, is that category stuff I was talking about. So you can use tags. You can see down here, here are all my tags. I'm just going to drop these so you can see them. When, where, projects, who, what. Sound a bit familiar? So this is how I can look for things based on their tags. I can quickly find things. I can combine the who and when, for example, or project and um, who. Or So what I can do, so let's see, I've got, you can see here, these are all the projects that I've got happening. Now, I'm not working on all of these at the one time, but these are things that I've got open. I might come back to them at a later time. Look here, books to read, uh, books to write, blog ideas, blog drafts. You can see there's lots and lots of projects that I've got happening, PR, uh, meditations, marketing. These are all my active projects. And then what? I've got stuff for home, stuff for work. So these are things, just the labels that I might give things. Look here, sem social media, seminar notes, uh, mindset, mindfulness. These, these come under my blogs. Um, business administration. So I can search things collectively. Now, and the other thing I can do is capture receipts. So I'm just going to find here with my notebooks up here. And my archive. Look here, my tax receipts from the previous financial years. Here's the current receipts, but I'm using ta a tag for this financial year. Look at all my reference material, 600 notes, easy to find anything at any time. My library, things I want to read, PDFs that people have sent me. So that's how I use Evernote to capture everything and I find it in an instant when I want. Now, what have your questions you've got here? Good, Annette, good idea to use OneNote with Tickler concept. Great tips. Thanks. Awesome, Annette. Caroline, so can we set this up on our computer? Do we need to have special phone and computer to set it up? No, you don't. And it's free. Evernote is free. Of course, the paid features are going to give you much more functionality. But to start with, just use the free one. And I can send you a link if you like uh, for, for how to set Evernote up. But it's just an app on your phone and a little app that you download on your computer, Mac or PC, and you can use it on the cloud. So if you go to somebody else's computer, you could also just log in and find it. Such a powerful tool. Okie dokie, get back to my slide now. You've got to pick up the pace a bit here, guys, because I'm going to, otherwise I'm going to run out of time. If Evernote's a bit overwhelming, Wonderlist is another one. This is just lists. This is a great one as well. Again, it can synchronize with an app on your phone 
and a, uh, a, a web thing that you can log on to. I started out using Wonderlist. So you can have lists for phone calls. You can see here today, this week, these, this is really old, phone calls that I need to make. Uh, so, and you can share lists with other people. So this is really, really simple. A lot of people like to start out with this and I often recommend this to people if Evernote's too overwhelming for them. Now, if you're managing social media, I love tools like Hootsuite and Buffer because they allow you to schedule when you're going to put posts out for things and it allows you to put the one message across all different platforms. So it's going to save you a lot of time. If you're going away but you want things to still go out or maybe you've got an event coming up or a special coming up, you can pre-plan that. Do it in a, when you've got time rather than trying to cram it in when you don't thing I love about Buffer over Hootsuite, I did used to use Hootsuite, but what I love about Buffer, if I'm still correct, the free version allows you to have one in each of these different platforms, whereas Hootsuite just allows you three and that's it. So I can have one identity in each of these different platforms. And I find it a lot more cost effective if you want more than that. You can have up to 10 so I can have three here, one there, two there, whatever, uh, for $10 a month which is what I pay for now with Buffer. So this is a great social media tool to be able to organise your time and do things, plan for things to go out. And it's really important too when you look at how your clients respond to you. You might do stuff when you're on the Facebook, but it might not be when your clients are on Facebook. You want stuff to go out in a timely manner. And that's asked, is Buffer easy to use? I find Buffer really easy to use. I converted from Hootsuite to Buffer and just found it so much easier. And it, I definitely prefer Buffer to Hootsuite. Yeah, I just love it. I just find it really, really simple. Naomi, Buffer's free. Um, I think that was your question or you might have been asking about Evernote. I'm not sure. <laughs> which one that was I keep coming back to my messages so sorry guys no no Evernote okay yes the basic the basic uh, membership for Evernote is free otherwise if you go up to I'm on the next level which I think is called premium and I think it's about $70 a year or $80 a year it's not a lot and there's a few little different features the search is much more powerful on the premium you can work offline with Evernote um there's a few little more advanced features that you can do. You can actually email into your Evernote account. So that's really cool. I, I manage my clients in Evernote as my CRM. So if I'm sending them an email, I just CC it into my Evernote so that I can capture it there and I've got a record. Okay, keep moving along. Toggle's another great tool. I'm starting to run out of time, guys. So I'm going to pick up the pace a bit here. Uh, Toggle is a great time management tracking tool. I couldn't live without this. So I use this to be able to track my time for my clients and I can give them a really detailed report. So what you can do is define by client, project and activity. Or you can just do, do it for yourself and go project and activity. So if you're doing a task you really hate, but you made a commitment to yourself that you're going to do three hours a week. So maybe it's exercise, maybe it's research, something like that. And you go, oh, I can do 15 minutes. Oh, that's it. Got to stop. <laughs> you're going to go clock on, clock off, clock on, clock off. This is a great way to actually track how much time you spend on something. Or if you want to put forward a quote to somebody and you want to give them a realistic time frame of how long it's going to take, do the research first and see how long it actually does take you to do things. Track your time. Toggle's free. It's online. It also has an app on your phone that synchronizes. As I said, couldn't live without it. So you can see here, got a client called SMI, the project social media, and I was creating a video for them. SMI, course review modifications, um, and the task I was doing was Moodle assessments. So I can, it, it will print out a report and say, this is how much time I spent on social media that week. And these are all the things that I was doing. So when I'm giving clients an invoice, I attach this report to them and go, here you are, this is exactly what I did for you and how long it took. But you can do this with your team that you might be working for instead of having timesheets that they fill out. Really, really powerful tool. Okay, all right, cool. One more little secret, the last one. Woohoo! Systemized for success. So this is about creating some routine and some systems and structure for around how you do things. Creating some strong, so a bit like 
a bit like this. This is a system, but we want to create some more objective systems for how we do things. And that will make us uh, keep us in track, keep, make sure that we're consistent with what we're doing things. So this is about procedures and process that we apply for ourselves. So what I mean by that is, for example, I look at, I work with people around their goals. So this could be personal goals, or this could be for your business, or if you're like me and you're consul a consultant, they kind of work together. So I look at purpose, vision, and mission. What I mean by that is that your purpose is why you're put on this earth, who you innately are, what it is about you that, that makes you unique, what drives you. Yeah, your vision is what you see yourself doing. What's the big game, the long term, the, the, the where you're ending up, the direction that you're working towards. This is the foundation for your goals. And then your mission. So this actually details, uh, details how it is that you do what it is that you do. So, for example, um, uh, if I give you the example, I thought I'd written it down. I have. Here we go. My, I read to you what my purpose is. My purpose is to create order out of chaos, to find meaning in things, to empower others, to practice mindfulness. So, for example, I'm an honest, professional, open-minded woman, spiritually and emotionally aware. I seek answers, answers and purpose in everything I do. For every action, there is a why and a how. I seek to understand this and to share this knowledge with others. This is who I am. This is just who I am. And this is why I am here. And this is what floats my boat. My vision, I'm regarded as, as, a, as a leading national expert on time management and stress management. I share my knowledge through speaking seminars and abundant online resources all of which are well received. And my mission, I deliver my vision, my purpose with enthusiasm. I inspire other people and they easily engage with me because I'm a highly proficient communicator. I constantly grow and adapt by learning. So that gives you an idea. I come up with statements with people and this helps you to stay on focus and stay on track and make quick decisions and not get distracted when all of this stuff is really crystal clear. And I work through with this with people on a personal level, but also for business as well. And of course, this will be familiar with people is working through key areas of your life. So when you start setting goals, you'll have seen, oops, go back, backwards, <laughs> go through those seven key areas of life. People have been familiar with this. So it's like a, a wheel of life. It's all very well coming up with goals, but you need to know what I need to do now. And what I need to, and what it is, when it is, what I'm actually going to do. So goals are useless unless you've actually got action steps to take in place for that. So I really drill down with people to be to have some clear steps about what they're going to do, and brainstorm and, and really work that with people. So I'm just going to give you a quick example of how that works. So let's say I'm not a smoker, but let's say my I wanted to quit smoking by December 2017. If I mind mapped that goal that's come up in my health goal, maybe. I think, what are all the things that I need to do before I can do that? I need to research my options. Okay, what do I need to do before I do that? What sort of things do I need to research? Wow, look at all those things. I've suddenly branched off in all those different areas. What do I need to do before I do hypnosis, for example? I need to research which ones are in my area and which ones I want to get quotes from. Maybe ring up some or email some to get some quotes so that by Tuesday, the 25th of October at 10 a.m., I can put in my diary, I'm going to ring a hypnotist to make an appointment. But that's just one arm. What if I, I heard about a clinical program that was really, really good? So I dig out the information I've got somewhere in my Evernote or my Tickler file and find that number. And in my diary on the Thursday, the 27th of October at 10 a.m., I write down that I'm going to ring the clinic to make an appointment. So I work with people until we can actually drill down to a date and a time when they're going to do something. And it's something that you guys can do as well. And this is part of what that system you need to create to be efficient with your time. Don't get distracted by things that are unimportant. Really focus on those priorities. All righty. 
Wow, we did it. I'm a little bit over time. I've still got just a few more little things with, to share with you, so I hope you guys don't mind. I did time it, but I've obviously rattled on and asked you questions and answered questions. So I've just got a little bit more to share with you. This is, my, is the seven secrets. There they are for you. These are the things that we've covered today. But what I want to share with you is that, you know, it's a webinar. There's always a crazy offer and I've got one for you. Now, let me turn it on. I can actually turn it on my webinar and it should appear for you guys. Uh, okay, where are we? Offers. Here we go. I'm going to turn it on. They should appear. So you're going to see two things. There's an automated, you can see down in the screen below, I'm going to share with you an automated prioritization task list. How cool is that? And there's an early bird offer for something I'm offering as well. I'm going to tell you about that in a moment. You know there's going to be an offer. There always is. This is what I want to show you. This is something I've created in Excel. If you want it, there's a link there to be how to get it. These are the quadrants. See there? Do they look familiar? We know what those are. And this is in Excel. And here's some a picture down here to give you some prompts if you're not sure what needs to sit within those quadrants. All you need to do is write down, here's your to-do list of, everything you need to do you just have to put the number for the quadrant that it applies to over here and this is what happens this using the power of excel formulas so you do need to have excel to be able to use this over here ding, ding, it automatically prioritizes them for me into a list this is what i need to do now this is what i need to schedule into into my calendar or diary this is probably what i need to delegate or automate these are things I need to put into a someday maybe list. I'll get round to it. I'll get to it when I can. So if you'd like that, just click on that little link in that offer below. If you can't for any reason see it, let me know. And I you'll get uh, access to that, to that little tool, that prioritizing tool, if you would like that. Now, here's the other thing that I wanted to show you. Let me just go back to my slides here. Okay, and get my. I told you it's like driving a car. Ah, here we go. I want to give you an exclusive sneak peek of something I've been working on. This is I've been working on this for twelve months, and I'm really, really excited to show you this. All right, here you go. I not Wonder Woman. That's not what I'm showing you. Ah, uh, this is a online training program that I've developed so that you can do. I go into a lot more detail of all those little seven things that I just showed you, those secrets, but I go into it in a lot more detail. So you'll be able to follow some instructional videos, do some, do some training. I'll just show you the curriculum. So you can see here it's draft, it's unpublished. I haven't launched it yet. In about two weeks, I'm going to be launching it. But here are the, those seven secrets. Here they are mindfulness and business how to identify when you're productive or unproductive i take you through that give you some ideas of some things to look at how do you know when you're unproductive or unproductive give you some think questions to ask yourself your space as well so a few little articles there you can read and in each of the modules there's a little valuable takeaway pack do you remember we used to go to a birthday party and when you left the party they gave you a little takeaway pack with cake some birthday cake or lollies. Well, that's kind of what that is. Here we go, killing procrastination. So I actually take you through a process of identifying your core beliefs and your learning and communication style and then show you how to put it all together so that it's useful for you to kill pro procrastination. I'm going to take you through my version of a personality test. So look at your time management style and what you can do to apply that. Take you through in a lot more detail those systems and how you can system create a system to do that flow that I talked to you about, how to collect things and deal with things. If you have email in Yahoo, Gmail or Outlook, I'm going to go through a lot more detail of how you can actually prioritise your emails. Here's a lot of those tools. So the paper management show you in a bit more detail how to uh, – that's that's the prioritizing tool that I went through with you, how to manage your paper, Japanese note tag system, go through Evernote in a lot more detail, talk about some of those digital tools and then how to turn those big ideas into action, that mind mapping that I was talking about, how to create some systems like procedures and things like that for your business. So that's all in that online course. I haven't launched it yet. I'm about to launch it and I'm going to share something with you. I feel a bit sick in my gut because it goes against the grain of everything that people have told me. 
but I'm going to give you a special offer around this. Oh, before I do that, I just want to give, show you how this works. Here's what the course looks like. So this is that time management style. So you can see here, here's a video and I take you through it. I've just turned the volume down here, but you can see there's me showing you how to do it, stepping you through it. I'm talking in this video and there's my mouse. Here's a little downloads that you get. And of course you leave comment in there for me and I, I respond to you. If you've got questions or you've discovered things, or you're not sure, I respond to it. So this is what the sales page looks like right now. You can't actually see that curriculum because I haven't launched it, but I'm not lying to you. I wanna show you something down here. For you guys, because you're on the webinar, for two days only, I'm doing this crazy early bird price. It's so naughty of me. But what I want to do is say thank you for participating with me. I want your feedback. I want you to tell me what you want to learn. I want you to use that hashtag and say what you're excited about, what you're looking forward to. You can, you can pre-purchase this before I launch it. So if you want to, there's an offer that's on the webinar page there as well. This is also on this page. You can get this course for $99. You can see here when I launch it, I've got a special launch price. It'll be launched for two weeks. After that, it's $3.97. So you have the opportunity to get in early if you want to. All righty. I'm going to go back to my screen now, back to my web, and I hope you guys are still with me because I've gone a little bit over time. You're all still there. Hope you're all still there. Uh, I've done the crazy offer number two. Still here? Good on you, Annette. Fantastic. Caroline's still here. That brings me to the end of my webinar. Thanks for persisting with me. I've gone oh, just five minutes over time. How cool is that? Like I say to people, I might be the time tamer, but it doesn't mean I always run on time. But that's not bad. Hey, great time, Caroline. Thank you. If you guys want to catch up with me, this is where I connect with people online. So you can find me on Facebook, my Twitter handle and LinkedIn. These are the spaces that that I work in. Thank you, Louise, for those tips that she said. Louise says thank you for all the tips. I hope you guys got value from that today. Does anyone have any questions just in finishing up? I might be able to knock some of it off. I obviously can't go into great detail. Is there anything that anybody wasn't sure about? And it said that was great, Barbara. Especially love the tools. Awesome. And it said, she's enrolled. I have to go. Time is pressing. Thanks, Naomi. That's awesome. All right. Uh, what did Caroline said? How long will it take to go through all the offer? I'm not sure. What, what do you mean by the offer, Caroline? Can you elaborate on that question? Dale said, brilliant. Thank you. Where are you based? I am in Alice Springs. But I do a lot of stuff with people online. So I use Skype and I use screen share. And so I make instructional videos for people specifically for them and, and share it with them. So uh, I do that. Carolyn, not sure if you're going to come back with a question. But we can chat anyway if you want to afterwards, if you've got, if you've got an email for me. All right, guys, I'm going to leave it there. Thank you so much for being my guinea pigs and persisting with me as I struggled on with technology, learning how to drive this car. And I will do some more webinars later on. Would love your feedback. Don't forget that hashtag time tamer if you wanted to share any of the things that you've learnt. And I look forward to catching up with you down the track. Remember, be kind to yourself, take time for yourself and enjoy your day.